This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Welcome to the musical edition of Awesome Cast 308. I'm Mike Sorg. We were singing off, uh, uh, not to the music, unfortunately, uh, before we just hit record here. Uh, like I said, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA, and Mayhem Studios. As you can see, it looks like. I still can't figure out why I have this down here. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of going off about that on our show uh, last week. But with me in studio, I love it when I got somebody in the physical meat space. Uh, right here in Mayhem Studios, it's Chilla on the Couch here in Studio Mayhem. Thank you for joining me back in here. Thanks for having me. And yeah. that's meat, M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T. However anybody wants to do it. Unless you know. it's pepperoni on your pizza, the right, meat space. Right, right. Um, uh, Katie needed to have an evening of screaming along to Disturb um, because they're in town. Um, so an ooh ah, ah 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 to her too. She's down with the sickness. Uh, so uh, I thought uh, she wasn't feeling well. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what that means. That's not what that meant in the Slack. Uh, <laughs> that's why hashtag ooh ah ah ah. ah. Um, there you go. Um, it actually sounds like a different song, but this is the awesome cast. We talk tech, we talk geek, and uh, we are people that use them in the area. Myself, I'm my uh, video producer, podcast producer, and of course, Chilla. He's a gadget guy over at Big Bank International Incorporated International, uh, and uh, and it's good to have that. And we just hung out this past weekend, Sorgatron Media Coffee. Uh, just keep an eye out on the Sorgatron Media Twitter um, and Facebook page for the next event. I actually, geez, I, I realize I haven't been posting them. Or join, join the newsletter at SorgatronMedia.com. We also announce them there uh, to kind of keep you up to date with that kind of stuff and kind of what we're making during the week. Um, there won't be one of those this week because I'm actually going on vacation. As Basically, I'm going to finish the podcast, get in a car, and disappear into the woods for about four days and get covered with soda. It's going to be – it's kind of a religious experience. And, and just follow my my, my, uh, my uh, uh, online ventures if you want to uh, see what that's about, especially Snapchat. Um, but this is the awesome cast. Check us out at awesomecast.net. That's where you can subscribe to the show and find links to ways you can support the show. There's some Amazon links over there. There's Patreon and so many other things. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, um, iHeartRadio, and and the like, um, all over the place. Uh, wherever uh, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube Live. We're going to be playing with the YouTube Live actually a little bit more here in the future in, in, in some different ways. Uh, so looking forward to that. And, of course, we're live here every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we'll be especially being trying to finish be before 8 p.m. because there's now wrestling on Tuesday nights that I want to watch. Uh, so we'll be readjusting a little bit there. And also you can check us out, riversedgepgh.com. Thursdays, Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. after Funny Money. Thank you to our friends at the River's Edge, uh, riversedgepgh.com for supporting the show, getting us out there to some near new earballs. And uh, they got a great network going on there. They, they have uh, shows about seven days a week now and, and in the morning. And, and uh, we, of course, Brian was over at the, uh, uh, the coffee this past weekend as well. And uh, it was uh, good to kind of catch up with him. Also, as I mentioned, thanks to our friends um, supporting us on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com slash slash awesome cast including our friends over at thistle c business development up in cranberry pa at thistle c on twitter if you want to check out what they're doing and of course uh michael fedor of mike fedor show on twitter uh go follow them say hi thank them for 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 helping this show out and if you'd like to you can give a penny you can give a buck you can give these people are given five bucks at the executive producer level that money does go right back into the show and uh, helping expand the show, improve the show, um, you know, some things you don't see behind the scenes, some stuff we're doing um, online and, and just making sure the bills are paid to, to do this kind of stuff uh, and keep doing it. Uh, this is definitely a passion for us. And we're, we're, we're so happy that some of you guys um, think it's worthwhile to to support in this way. And we really do appreciate it. And if you don't, you don't have to do that. Just tell your friends, share the show, um, like it or however to get more more eyeballs on it. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla. Chilla. I don't know if I'm buying this thing. 
So, I, but but man, when there was a picture that came out of a hand holding up a tiny Nintendo Entertainment System and says, "Hey, we're selling this thing in a few months," I got pretty excited. Nintendo is selling an NES Classic Edition. Uh, it's going to be sixty bucks. It's going to include over thirty classic NES games. I got to see the list. This and we've seen these Sega Genesis's and 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 Ataris and and everything coming out that 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 do the same thing. Um, I, I and yes, I have a Nintendo and I have a stack of cartridges, but this is a thing I, that has an HDMI port I can just plug in and go. And and that list of games is pretty much like almost everything you'd want to play initially. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty excited about this one. Zelda's on there. Zelda's on there. We're good to go there. And just the, just the just Zelda Zelda, right? Like not Zelda two or anything. Zelda two is on. Oh, there. it is on there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I was excited to see Kid Icarus. That was actually Ooh. Uh, after a while. That was actually a hard cartridge to find for me. I've not played much of Kid Icarus to be honest. Yeah, it, it was a fun game for me. Doctor Mario was huge for me in college. Mm-hmm. That was a throwback game. I mean, N sixty four was out. By the time I was Game in college, Boy. But Game Boy on the Dr. Mario, yeah. my brother and I were nuts on Dr. Mario. Like we both had the cartridges and we we game linked each other and played it like, <laughs> like we did that thing, mm-hmm. you know, the, the hardwire, um, the hardwire <laughs> multiplayer gaming. You have to buy two copies of the game, you know, like like it was really the precursor to multi game multiplayer gaming we have today. Right. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm surprised they have Mario Brothers. Oh, and then they do have the Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers yes. two and three. Yes. Um. I missed the Super Mario because they actually had it in alphabetical order and put Mario Brothers on its own, which is a mm-hmm. which is a rare find. I mean, not many people played, from what I remember, the the original Mario Brothers. No, no. Well, you you got Super Mario in the pa- as the pack in. You didn't really go in from there. It includes Pac Man, includes Donkey Kong, Metroid, Kirby's Adventure, which was a fantastic rental for me. Mega Man Two. Um, what what is Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream? So here's a funny thing about Punch Out. I actually have a. I was just noticing. I do have the cartridge of, of Punch Out. Remember there was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Yes. The I, I I think this Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream. Mr. Dream was a replacement for Mike Tyson. So I think they're clarifying which version of Punch Out it is. And this is just text. Okay. Um, Ninja Gaiden. Like I said, Pac Man, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior. Double Dragon 2, interesting. That's the game my mom wouldn't let me buy on the Targer, Tiger uh, handheld because <laughs> uh, uh, kids were fighting in the playground over Double Dragon. I wanted the Tiger handheld. I didn't even want the, the NES cartridge for it. Uh, Castlevania 1 and 2, Bubble Bottle, Balloon Fights. So there's some weird, some weird old NES kind of classics in there. Ghosts and Goblins. Um, like I said, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus. So there's a lot of, like, if you wonder what some of those characters were in um, Super Smash Brothers, you're going to you're gonna be educated on it here on this in this package. Uh, Super C instead of Contra. I thought that was a weird pick um, that, that, that they went that way. Uh, but I don't know, maybe licensing or something. Tecmo Bowl. Wow. This, this is, uh, I mean, this is the thing that you, like, bring to a friend's house, hook up, and it's a party. Ready to go party machine. Make sure make sure you play with the, the Raiders with Bo Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, but no, I, I'm excited for that. I, again, I don't. And this this led to a different conversation. I think uh, it was either on, on my own Facebook or over on, on Awesome Cast's uh, uh, Facebook group. But they're like, well, well, you know, you can just like get a thirty five dollar Raspberry Pi and make this and play even more games than this. Well, yes, but. I, you know, not everybody's going to do that. That that takes a little bit of doing, right? It, it does definitely take some some definite know-how. The one thing that, that I like about that, and I'll add the link real quick into the show notes if you want to bring up the the page all about how to do it. Um, it's over on, on Lifehacker. Uh, let me add it here to the notes. Um, so you can bring that up. The, the, the interesting thing is, is after this was launched then, and I don't know if this case was already out, but someone quickly whipped up an, an, a nest case for the raspberry pi oh so you can actually take oh, yeah, yeah, the raspberry yeah. this, pi this, and... actually this is the one i shared that kind of uh that, that prompted that the the conversation earlier um yeah it, it's really cool it, it's 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 like a is it a it's a 3d printed case um it it looks like the nes kind of shell and like the the drawer opens up and that's where all of the uh, if you've seen the raspberry pi on the edge there's the ethernet port and like four usbs like that's under there uh that's that's pretty cool but again i don't have ready access to a 3d printer i should talk to my local library i think i think you can you can buy those cases printed online but yeah from them the, the one thing that i have been pretty impressed with when it comes to those the, the raspberry pi devices is their ability to play 
PlayStation games, their ability to play Sega. I mean, you could really load that up. You, you know, considering how many of those games, like Grand Theft Auto, and, and mm-hmm. a lot of these games are playable on our phones, were playable on our phones like four or five versions ago. You mm-hmm. know, I, I was playing, I was, I was sitting there playing like Doom and, and Quake on my 3GS, and I'm like, wow, this is powerful. A yeah. 3GS. And now, like with like our sixes and our Samsung edges and, and everything like that, um, that's light years beyond what a PlayStation game needs to be. And 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 that Raspberry Pi, especially that newer one, has a little more power in it. That's all it needs. It yeah. really is. It's a, it's a, it's incredible. And there's some cool cool projects out there where the, like the iCade, where they actually sell you the the kit. All you do is put it together, you load it up, and it actually has a screen and a joystick, and it acts like a miniature arcade. But back to what you're talking about for for the ease of use and 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 the two at uh, two dollars a game when you when you add it up for the for the the NES, um, I will probably have one of these and it'll be in one of the rooms just hooked up to a TV and I can I could play at any time. Yeah, just 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 so it's there just mm-hmm. because it's just easy because you don't want to tinker with everything, right? right. I mean, uh, we are tinkers, but sometimes we just want to plug something in that works. Right. I think that's why you and I have our Xbox Ones and our Apple TVs and our Chrome, eh, maybe Chromecast, not so much, but you know, but but those kinds of things because we're like, well, well, yeah, that's cool. We can make the thing that works exactly like this and not have to pay all this, but. I just want a thing that works, and 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 I need to have a long conversation with you about um, DVRs, for instance, because I know you've been we, we've been kind of talking about that, and and I need to do that sooner than later because fall season is going to come up before I know it, and and I won't have my my DC stuff on CW anymore. Thank you, Hulu. Um, <laughs> but uh, but still, I, I I think I think uh, no no I think it's something like that, or even these people say, oh look, I can get this piece here, and then these people did all the work for me here. I'm not getting Raspberry Pi to be a tinker. Um, to I want to code Python. I, and make things and put it and attach it to a robot and stuff like I, I you know the the camera system that I talked about here on the show is something somebody made for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the, the package was there. It's like, all right, take this thing, put it on here, set this thing up, plug this thing in, boom, that's it. And and that's that's the level I'm willing to dedicate time to, time and effort to. And and that's why I it's another reason I have waited this long to jump onto Raspberry Pi. I was waiting for everybody else to do, you know, the work, mm-hmm. basically. And now you, you can get this thing, find these projects, tinker with them, reap the benefits of it. So I think it's awesome. It's not just for the people getting in the code. Yes. <laughs> I think we need to remember. All right. Uh, Shilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing is Microsoft made an announcement, and they started to unveil their business-focused mm. uh, video streaming service, which is kind of uh, a look at YouTube, but for the enterprise. Um, and I think this is actually a bigger deal I, th- I think you're going to hear more about this in the future, especially when it comes to a, a lot of larger companies. Um, stream is a way you can drop stuff on your desk, and you can also stream, upload, share, tag videos um, within your organization so you can protect that. Um, it does have tie-ins with uh, Azure Active Directory, so you can actually limit who can see um, the content that you're streaming. Um You can also uh, not just publish internally, but publish externally. They're claiming there's some um, they're they're claiming there's some lightweight abilities to edit and add um, titles and 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 notes at the bottom and all kinds of stuff. But where where I think this is really cool is a lot of companies do want to have an in-house version of YouTube without having to to do a lot with external and host it in kind of a private environment with the ability, if they should choose to, be able to share outside. Um, So I think this is not only going to bring more streaming content uh, to to companies and and academic sites and the government, I think it's going to bring more jobs for video and creatives Mm -hmm. um, into the enterprise where I think a lot of times there's not as much attention paid to that nor funding. Um, this is definitely going to bring this to the forefront, especially as you have capabilities. Like we always talk about, you know, we'll just plug your, plug your iPhone in and mirror it and record it and do this and do that. Those capabilities are becoming easier and easier. Um, 
And with that, I think you're going to see companies picking up technologies like this because it's a lot mm -hmm. easier to record a tutorial than to try to write a manual or to, to do some large scale screen capture this and note this and do this. Um, doing it in a video platform and, and the, the youth of today mm -hmm. that they don't want to read even a, a one page PDF document. They want to watch a two minute video. And this is, um, and kind this of is directly into what you do because we, when we talk about you and you and Krauss, like we, you deal with kind of deployment of these technologies mm -hmm. and education internal and you've talked about creating that content to educate internally, right? Correct. Um, and, and this is something on the bigger scale, obviously. This yeah. isn't a small business case necessarily. Um, although it could be depending on your size, maybe there's a need for it. Yeah, I think they'll, they'll probably, uh, there's Office 365 and there's some small business packages and it's, it's going to be part of that platform. Um, so I think it's going to be one more thing that can be added to your toolkit, right? Per se, right, right. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, uh, nice. I, I mean, well, that's. I mean, uh, Office sixty, Office three sixty five, all these tools has uh, has basically made the business side user friendly, right? Because I mean, we've been on SharePoint, right? We've seen those days. We had we had a SharePoint server uh, for our business of about thirteen employees. And that's where we serve. We were serving video off of that thing mm -hmm. for for our clients to to watch, freaking WMVs at the time, <laughs> right? Um, and and I and it was just a box that sat right there, not too far from my own desk. <laughs> and and what I think is is the nice thing about Office three sixty five and the hosted environment, it it stays backwards compatible with the content that you generate. But it makes sure that you're always current, you're always patched, right? Because right. they're doing um, it because it, kind of like Google, they're doing it out there on their stuff on their multi-horsepower computer up in the cloud somewhere like that's that's the promise of azure basically right mm -hmm. and, and and azure just as are just for people that maybe not follow azure is just their basic kind of bundle of online cloud computer you think i, I you could think of it as like the uh, the equivalent of of like um um, Amazon Cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Amazon uh, Web Services. Web Services, how Google puts everything up in the cloud. I don't know if there's an entire name for that other than just Google. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, how your docs are up there, uh, stuff's being processed up there. Um, there's actually a component. I don't know if they use this, but supposedly the Xbox One part of the game you're playing is supposed to be processed in the cloud instead of on your machine itself, which means you can do more powerful things than your machine was basically built for, which just made me think of a really interesting aspect to these new machines that they're adding on. Now I think about it. Um, but I, I don't even know if they're applying that the way that they promised. It's, so one of, one of the things that, that was pretty cool that Krauss actually brought to my attention was that um, they don't do software upgrades at Microsoft. So like when you, they go to the next version of exchange or the next version of what of SharePoint. Yeah. Um, they don't upgrade the servers that you're on. They literally build an entire new environment and move, and then over. take the content and go whoop. Like they're on Azure. Yeah. Wow. Like there's no that they, they, they don't they don't do upgrades. They're like we'll yeah. just build something new and move the content. <laughs> That's so, crazy. So, yeah, and, and I can't like logis logistically like I, it's isn't that worse? Well, because no, it's not physical machines anymore. It's all virtualized machines. So you just Spin up more virtual servers. Okay, I mean, move and the stuff, content, and, and, and then your stuff should be duplicated anyways. And, and then so, shut it down. Yeah, well, I mean, the 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 way this patching works on a grander scale is like this is high engineering at this point. Like it really is. Well, one of the things we're working on at work and, it, and it, using some software is in our virtualized environment. Um, we're looking at. Well, maybe we can we can eliminate some of the the computer problems, putting you on a virtual machine, and the virtual machine is is built on the fly during login. So it's not sitting there. It's that that oh, this thing is sitting here on the server. You log into this box here, right? You know, it's, it's <laughs> which means you, you go to log in. Silicon and it Valley builds a new Silicon Valley. This is where your box is going to go, <laughs> and this is where your next box. And is this is where the go. let me let me show you where your next box is going to go down here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, which is like, that's exactly where all this stuff is happening. Our mm-hmm. big rooms, like you see in the in the Silicon Valley rows of things, that's where your iCloud stuff is going. That's where everything we're doing here for the show that goes up into a YouTube or a Google Doc or over on Facebook. Like they they're living in that's the environment. Like if you want to visualize that, it goes out into the tubes on the internet <laughs> and into these things. Google will tell you that it could be on a boat. It could be on a boat. Sometimes Google's data has data centers on boats. They do. They do. I, they, I think we've, we've, we've settled. That's what the mystery barge was in San Francisco for a while. Uh, so, so yeah, no. And then, and then when they say, hey, we want a warrant. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not in, we're not in this country. <laughs> oh, what country it is? We'll go talk to them. Oh, it's in the ocean. Um, that's, that's, I mean, that's part around that. Just to clear like that red tape, you mm-hmm. know. Um, which is interesting. So, wow, wow, we got heavy there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's slow it down. But short, but short story is, if you're a business and you want to do video and you want to do it in the cloud and and make it secure for your enterprise, check right. out and, check out Microsoft Stream. And not necessarily public. Not necessarily. I want to post my things like a YouTube or anything. Well, like what that, I liked right? about this was, is it kind of gives you both sides of it. You can make it public to the internet, and you can make it private to your company. You can do you can do both intermingled on the same environment, which I thought was pretty cool. So it takes that security aspect, and from my understanding, kind of makes it point and click. Nice, nice. Chilla, you know what's point and click? Pizza. Pizza is point sure. And, sure. Point at it, <laughs> click it right into your mouth. Your good friends, <laughs> the Slays on Broadway, they provide pizza, perfect pizza for. Uh, I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I'm now residing at the uh, 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 PNC Park location, uh, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. They're here. Hey, you can park in front of their place now. <laughs> they, they finally, the barriers are gone. They're still doing, of course, construction up here on Broadway Avenue and Beachview. But you can, I, I got to park and not have to like do the dance and, and pick up my pizza. It's great. We need to do a Pizza Pals very, very soon and get back up there. Uh, so check it out, Rico and the guys have been uh, building Building a pizza empire that started right here in Beachview. And of course, uh, uh, also part of featured in nextpittsburgh.com uh, just just yesterday. Uh, Slice on Broadway was a part of that. Brew on Broadway was a part of that. And the, 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 those are the two places that f- seriously fuel what happens here at Sorgatron Media. And there might have been a quote from a certain Sorgatron Media <clears throat> person in, in that article as well. So you might want to check that out. Check out the Broadway uh, feature on nextpittsburgh.com for these guys and more thank you to our friends at slice on broadway oh and like i said pnc park uh home of the pittsburgh pirates is their newest location they're also down in carnegie pa on main street so go check that out and uh let them know that you heard about them on the awesome cast you want to check them out at uh at pgh underscore slice on twitter and slice on broadway on facebook and instagram and get hungry too all right guys we need like a code when you order from them you give them like the code like you heard the about code. them from the us. The awesome cast code? I'll the have awesome to ask them. I'll have to ask them. We, we can get a coupon code or something. Like maybe we'll get, maybe, may, like, I, you know the art that they've done. Maybe they can do a special awesome cast pizza. That would be awesome. That, that comes from the show. I mean, I don't know. What would, what, I, like, you guys on Twitter, if you're listening later or in the chat room, um, what would an awesome cast pizza be? What would be, what would be the awesome pie? What, what 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 screams that? So I don't know. I, I I don't know what what that is. Me is just lots of meat. I would think. He- heavy bandwidth. Heavy bandwidth. Heavy bandwidth bacon. Yeah. Ooh, thick bacon. Yes. Thick bacon. Heavy bandwidth bacon. I oh. stole that from Krause's floating bandwidth comment in the in the chat. <laughs> I had friends that were in a band, and there was some sandwich joint that was naming the sandwich off of them. But their name was Twisted Thoughts. So, and I forget, it was like a Reuben or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, back to the tech. Oh, a Reuben pizza. Reuben pizza? I don't like Reuben. Oh, I, I don't get Reuben. it. I don't get the appeal of, ah, oh, oh, damn, I just closed the thing I completely wanted to talk about. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Let's talk. Hey, hey, I've hey, been wanting a hey, blue. Mr. Tweet. Because, you know, I've been looking for that blue check mark for a while. But apparently I haven't been important enough for you. And uh, but apparently, as uh, Doug Durda shared with us in our Slack today, Twitter is now letting anybody request a verified account. Now, request is one thing. 
Because I think you had to know a guy that knew a guy to in order to request one before. But there's a form you can fill out. And I had to add my birth date because apparently I, I neglected my birth date when I'm setting up my profile. And uh, that's basically it. Um, it helps if you're using your real name most of the time on Twitter. I don't think I've been anything else but Michael Sorg on my on my header, I mean, other than the name, the at Sorgatron, of course. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. So now, now, the, so the blue check mark goes public is the, is the sub headline here on the Verge. Um, this comes with benefits. Other than having a fancy blue check mark that you can show off, uh, this also opens up to you anti harassment tools that have been available to the people with the blue check marks that are maybe a little more. Uh, I guess um, uh, susceptible to this, you know, uh, uh, writers and 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 celebrities and and things like that. So, but you know, that's been kind of a um, that's kind of been a subject that's been a little uh, under contention here over the past couple of years uh, with a lot of things going on on harassment on Twitter. So it'll be interesting if you if I do get approved of this. I did fill out the form uh, a couple of hours ago, hours ago actually. So we'll see if that comes through. I'll let you guys know what the process is. Um, if there's anything interesting out of that, and, and and you can also go through and and apply for the verification as a business, I believe. Um, yes, here, there it says right here, um, because it was asking me if this was a business when I was signing up, and I think I'm going to go through to like at least Sorgatron Media, Psychic, uh, Psychic Media, maybe PodCamp Pittsburgh, and and see if we can get a verification on those as well. Um, you can. Before, they tended to only verify public features, brands, and people in the media, politics, sports, business, and other high-profile sectors. And again, we're kind of low-level, local, small businessy at this point, so maybe they weren't going to do that with us anyways. Um, so I, it'll be interesting. I think I'm going to throw, throw my hat in for a couple of those things, and uh, we'll see. The company says there is about uh, currently about 187,000 verified accounts but around 310 million monthly active users. I would not expect if you put a form in today to uh, get it anytime soon. Like, I think you should manage your expectations on that one uh, because they probably have a lot coming in. We should, we, you should, you should put it in and we can do a day count. A day count? Yeah, and this is, this is day 17. This is day of... 207 of the Twitter verification watch. <laughs> With Sorgatron on the awesome cast. Yes. We'll put a counter in the in the corner over here. No, let's put it in this corner over here. Um, so, yeah. You know, ding. This is day <laughs> 271. Ding. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting. I, I think, uh, and of course, there's also been news over the weekend. Um, Leslie Jones, is it? Yeah, Leslie Jones of, of the Ghostbusters movie, which, by the way, wasn't, wasn't too bad. I enjoyed it. I heard good things. Yeah, it's good things. It is good things. It is good things. Um, just don't just, just, it's a reboot. Remember it's a reboot when you go into it, just go with it. Uh, but, uh, there was, she was accepted to, uh, extreme amounts of racism remarks and hate speech from, uh, mostly anonymous people. And, and she's, she's out there kind of saying, you know, pushing for, Hey, can we fix this? And, and that's just been, you know, one of those things. So, so that goes on. Chill, are you going to get verified? I am going to get verified. Be I'll chilla. have my own day counter. B Chilla with his own own day counter. Uh, so Chilla, I, I I think I see you marked here. I put in an article for you because we were just talking about this. We were talking about this a little bit at the coffee the other day about your you know as as we've said many times on the show, Chilla lives in the future. He's testing this out. We'll get to it eventually, but apparently somebody might do it for us and not not us doing it ourselves as we're seeing here. Uh, have you looked at this article? I I, I briefly read it. Cause I saw it in the in the rundown earlier. Um. I like the idea. So basically they're saying, let's get the concept. Yep. So basically they're saying the best connected home might be the one built for you uh, in this article within Gadget, um, saying that there's going to be, you know, much like the, a guy comes in and does your roof, right? Um, they're going to come in and, and set up your house to be automated. So, you know, everything's going to work together. You know, it's installed the proper way. It can be tens of thousands of dollars to about $3,000 setting it up. You know, everything from uh, running from Apple's HomeKit to Alexa. Um, I might have woke somebody up out there uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever the case is. Um, so I, I, I think... And again, I mean, this is not something that everybody's going to use in just the general house. This is going to be 
the people putting the money into it. So when you see the nice nice houses and the little boxes on the on the hillside, like they're gonna be the ones that are putting the money in. Oh yeah, I want to be able to talk to my house. Like they check the box. Yeah, no, yeah, talk to my house. There we go. There we go. Um, so so Chilla, as a person who's who's done this, you know, pretty hands on yourself. What do you think of this concept? It, it's interesting when you look at the the manufacturers they're using because mm-hmm. they're using companies like Whirlpool, GE, Honeywell. Um, some of your more long-standing brands, mm-hmm. um, and and Honeywell being, I'm going to compare Honeywell to to the Nest because they they sit in that kind of same environment. I feel like I get a lot more with my Nest, mm-hmm. um, so that kind of concerns me. On the flip side, I like the idea that they're trying to use established manufacturers because of their tie ties in cross platform, mm-hmm. um, and things like the Nest don't tie in. Um, with Siri because it's not HomeKit compatible. Um, but then again, that that then worries me. You're not getting... I feel like picking your home automation technology is like picking your drapes. It's something that you want to pick and it's going to suit you. Um, using like a turnkey solution and something that was pre-built seems a little vanilla to me. And, and I'm looking for, maybe I'm, I'm probably not the norm here as normal, but, um, or as usual, but I feel like the stuff that I do is custom to things that I want it to do. Whereas now you're, instead of, instead of building your menu, you're being handed a menu and said, and being told you can do these things mm-hmm. versus the, the art of the possible, um, and doing what you would like to do. But I feel like that will be also like your home, like uh, drafted to your home, right? This doesn't make sense to have, you know, this kind of set up here because, you know, maybe you don't have like you were talking about how how you have like a light set up for the path to your bedroom from mm-hmm. the living room. Like you turn off all the lights except for the lights that get to your bedroom, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe that doesn't make sense on maybe a house that's like, a um, you know, not multi level or something like that, you know? Um, so I, I think that customizability unless because uh, aren't there kind of a certain level of things that you can do with the house turn the lights on do this uh um, um, set the temperature set the temperature you know and 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 you're saying you want that ability to do the extraordinary with that when i i i've read online like pe- certain people do it where um their their lights in their living room go from white to like a blue color and then back to white as they arrive home. So their kids know, Hey, daddy's home. Like I, I yeah, look at visual cue. Like I like, I like those concepts. So like this, like this, like other level of communication that happens. Right. Okay. I, I like those types of concepts uh-huh. and I feel like that's not something you're going to get off the menu. That's going to be okay. You have these devices and maybe you can do this, this and this, or maybe you can't, maybe you can do a, B and D, but you can't do C. And then if you try to do C, you're going to have to augment your entire setup. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, especially, it, I, I feel like home automation is still in, the, in its somewhat infancy stage. Oh, certainly. That you're going to put all this equipment in a house and pay tens of thousands of dollars. And then two years from now, be like, oh, I wish I could do this. Well, that's you're going to have to rip out 40% of what you have and replace it with this. Don't cars and, have the same problem, though? Like, but, I, we have a 2011. It's like, oh, it's got Microsoft Sync. Well, guess how dead Microsoft Sync is? Or it was, it was the one that didn't have the screen, like that mm-hmm. curve. You know what I mean? But, but I feel like you, you replace your car a lot more often than you replace your house. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> there's that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Even, like, the wiring in your house and the... I mean, your furnace. Mm-hmm. You, you're not... Re- I'm sure most people replace their car a lot more frequently than they do their furnace. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I just look at it from that aspect of, I feel like to me, it's something that's, that's built around a person. And and there's, there's other companies that do, I mean, AT&T, you can go to the AT&T store and have used their, like my life or something like that. Um, and they, they kind of have some, some solutions that are compatible. Um, but uh, I don't know, and 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 all of these all of these items. I don't care if you're you're the the smaller Nest or Wemo, or you're the bigger Whirlpool, GE, Honeywell. They all need that. They're they're like your car in the fact that they need maintenance. 
Um, they need firmware updates. They need software upgrades. Um, you get a, your Android OS gets updated or your iPhone gets updated and, and maybe they, they all need updates to be compatible with that. I think there's a lot more care that gets taken into case with this and try, I can't imagine, okay, you got, you got your person with their cable modem on the phone. Okay. Reboot your cable modem. Are you connected? Yep. Okay. You're good to go. Now it's okay. Take the Honeywell device off the wall, plug it into the <laughs> USB port on your computer, go to this website, install this soft. Like I, I, I see this along with the, the money you're spending for the, the equipment. I think they need to have some kind of service plan. And definitely tech support. And if your car doesn't start, I think you can, you'll you'll be a little better than your air conditioning is set to sixty eight degrees and won't shut off. Like that's that's where I worry about these types of solutions. Or your your fire detectors are all going off and you can't turn them off. And especially if it's something that's set up like this, like like you can see like a service contract. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, you don't just have a security system. You have a contract with. You have a monthly subscription. Yeah. You have a phone number you can yeah. call. There's people that check in on that, mm -hmm. you know, even though the guys didn't tell me I needed a permit for my alarm and I got nabbed for that, you know, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Thanks, Guardian. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, oh, they gave me the warning. They didn't say anything. Hmm. They didn't say anything until like we were having problems with it going off and finally they're like, yeah, we're going to have to issue a ticket because you don't have a permit. It's like, what? So I had to go deal with that, you know. Um, and pay a fine and show up in court and everything. It's like oh, so now you're gonna guys. need a permit for your home automation. Do it? Do you, do you? I, I, do, I don't think you do. I don't think they caught up with that. You're also in a different borough. Than, yeah, and I, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think you do. Yeah. Um, mainly because it doesn't, and like it doesn't call the police. Like <laughs> that's mine, true. Mine doesn't. That's true. And that's mine been, doesn't involve emergency services. Well, and, that, and that's been a concern with me setting up this DIY stuff. It's like you know, at what point you know is it. You know, it starts calling the cops and I'm kind of worried about a DIY thing that maybe I haven't set up correctly starts calling the cops to my place of business like mm -hmm. randomly in the night um, like that concerns me. I kind of would rather it be a thing that alerts me. Right. And then I say, hey, there's something going on. I'm seeing the video feed or somebody in our thing. I know it's not going to be quite as speedy, but it, it has that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or we has a chance to capture. I mean, there's no guarantee against any of that stuff. You know what I mean? It, it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, but there's just you know things you can do to help aid the process of dealing with something like that to happen. Where, so. where I could see this definitely being beneficial is in those developments that have kind of like the what do they call it? The is it like a homeowner's fee or the home. Like they have those. They have that fee that takes care of cutting your lawn and. And do it. some some like, of the, like like for for housing yeah for housing developments development, and stuff okay. some some of them expect they especially do it with like condominium complexes and whatnot okay but the, there's a oh, HOE homeowners associate homeowners something it's like an association fee um and it takes care of things like lawn care and um general upkeep around the neighborhood mm -hmm. um I could see if you're you, you kind of this buys you into that mm -hmm. and then you have someone that can come and, and service it. That'd be it curious. On, on, That'd be curious. Was, but we'd almost need like, we need kind of a, we, we would have, I don't know if you can even do this for neighborhoods like this, but kind of, kind of have like a beach view homeowners, like neighborhood mm -hmm. association or something. But I think everybody has to sign into it, you know, to a yeah. certain extent. Um, uh, two things, two things to, to add before we close this, this part of this. Uh, first of all, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I was at the community meeting two weeks ago uh, here in Beachview, and and they have a thing where the zone uh, a police officer come in and talks about like you know the crimes that basically happened in our neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. And says, yeah, this happened, this happened. Um, you know, most of these are jackasses that don't lock your cars. You know, you know whatever. Or this is this thing happened and whatever. Um, but they, they did say because this came around where some people uh, two streets over were they were they were jacking cars. Um, and somebody had a security camera and caught a picture of it. And it was all over Facebook, all over Facebook, all over the place and looking for the kid. And I don't know if they caught him or not, but still like, um, they were saying they were trying to see about having kind of a network of people with security cameras in the neighborhood. So if something happened, they would say, Oh, this person over here, let's see if they got something. And it's like the it's like the mesh it's like the mesh network but with cameras. Yeah, that's I, I think <laughs> I think a mesh network was mentioned and actually no it wasn't the cop it was and I keep forgetting who this guy's name but he he's the one that always comes in and talks about all of the 
um, kind of civil action, like police, like, like there was, there's, I don't know, there, there, there's some like courses you can attend and everything like that. And I keep forgetting what, what, what his position is, um, but I, I, he deals like kind of, I think with the community and police and, and, and that connection there a, a little bit, but he was, he's the one that actually mentioned that, I think. Um, so I'm very interested to see that. And I, I'm hoping I can hear more about that and, and may hopefully talk to somebody since I do, I have something, you know, and it is, it is something that I can, I can, I can, I have to set up ports or something, but I could turn this feed that shoots out in the street in front of my house and I can turn it into a live feed, you know, if I wanted to, you know, completely contributing to the police nanny state um, thought. But with that, but this is this is one protecting your own home, mm -hmm. right? Protecting our own neighborhood and, I, you know, us acting on it, you know, and I think that's I think that's gives power to the homeowner for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, for something like that. If something happens, you know, first of all, you know, if something happens, it's gotten uploaded to the cloud, hopefully, before anybody even does anything, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I get a little notification if I'm on the right device, and boom. Can you, with your with your setup, I, I know you, you kind of have it set up where it's going to go into Dropbox and send you an alert. Do they have anything, like, can you... Can you bring up on your computer via a browser the live feed? So if you remote it into your house, could you see that remotely? Yeah, easily? absolutely. Well, well, Without thing, publishing it to the world. Um, well, I mean, I can re I remote in with Team Viewer and I just look at it on a computer. Here, okay. Basically. Because um, I, I leave it up. I, I tend to, when I'm setting up down here or if I'm up in the office, um, again, two places where I will be for long periods and I would not hear if something happened in the front door. Right? Like, I'm not going to hear it unless the dog's going off about stuff. Um, and even then, sometimes I don't hear that depending on what I'm doing. Um, um, I leave those up. So it's always like in the corner. Right. And, and I have an idea. And, and actually, I didn't set it up here tonight and I should. Um, but um, but but no, no, entirely. Well, Cr Crazy Krause says he's been stopped by the Allegheny County, uh, an Allegheny County detective because they saw the camera on his house. And they said well, they need they wanted they were asking if they could have footage from it. For something to happen. For something yeah. that happened. So I, I think it's a great idea. And, and there's also, did you know? Because somebody asked about this. I, I'm sorry, we're we're completely getting localized here. Uh, but but depending on where you're at, this may apply to you too. Um, somebody was asking, I think the cop about like, hey, there's suspicious activity. We're pretty sure they're doing drugs over there. Is there anything we can do? And they're like, uh, yeah, tell three one one. We have three one one here okay. where you're like, hey, this this line is down and uh, there's a pothole here, and you can tweet them. Uh, PGH three one one on Twitter. Uh, and I don't know if Dormont has anything from. Uh, you're do. not as big, so you yeah. don't you don't need like a service like that. It's basically an informational thing, you know. Hey, a street lights out. Hey, Dormont is cool. Dormont is cool. Dirt <laughs> runs it. Dirt <laughs> runs it. <laughs> you can start your own, really. Um, but uh, where was I? Uh, uh, geez, where was I going with that? Oh no, they were saying, um, yeah, if you like, there's suspicious activity. Hit up three one one. They'll pass it through. You're not going to get a response because they're going to push it to a detective, and they're not going to tell you about their methods mm -hmm. when they're trying to figure this stuff out. But still, that's informational that helps, and it can be anonymous and everything like that. Um, then I realized we're probably one of those houses that gets reported to them because um, I don't know. You come around back every Tuesday night here, Chilla. <laughs> 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 and then these weird other characters come in a little later in the night for other stuff every once in a while. It's always on a Tuesday night, strangely enough. And then, uh, and then there's this other uh, weird guy that comes in on Sundays and, and everything. <laughs> uh, and it just walks up and comes in the gate and around back. Nobody comes to the front door here. I don't know. So, what you don't know is they were talking about your house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. When they were talking about it, I'm just like, are they talking about us? I almost want to raise my hand and be like, excuse me, are you on Blask? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're we're running a business. So, uh, yeah. A, a legitimate business. Like, that, uh, like we're running. No, 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 legal, no, 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 legal no, 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 activity. no, 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 we're running a legit business. We're, we're, uh, I think we're all registered up. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So anyways, anyways, let's get back around to, to some tech stuff. Oh, oh, real quick. Also, oh, Kraus, um, um, sent one, the Pittsburgh Technical College. Which I thought was PTI for a moment, but this is something different. Um, has a degree in smart building technology that he shared in the chat room here. Um, it's all about uh, building and construction across the industry. And I don't understand. Siri, who started the showroom here? What was Siri? Shut up, Siri. <laughs> Shut up, Siri. Um, um, but they, 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 they teach you about what people are looking for. It's, it's all hands-on experience, which I think is great. 
Um, they have uh, some some focus on troubleshooting, and this is where this is where things are going. So, mm-hmm. so I think this is great. What did I say? What, what, what did I always said? I was doing social media about five years ago, and I'm like, once there's a degree in social media. I know I need to stop and move on to something else, right? Um, so, but the, the, this is like this gets like um, commoditized, you know. Which, which you're the leader in it, Chilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it becomes now like great because then the people like you get to go out and teach these other people, and then now we're having an army of people that want to smartify your house. <laughs> so, what do you do with a home automation degree? Anyways, you, you go automate houses. <laughs> yeah, there's something to do there. Yeah, uh, BitTorrent now. Have you heard about this? I, 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 I've been. There's not so much in this article I shared, but I, I was very interested. There's the BitTorrent's been doing a couple things. There's BitTorrent now, and there's BitTorrent Live. BitTorrent Live news actually um, um, had a big kickoff. I think last night or with the uh, Republican National Convention, mm-hmm. and um, Justin Robert Young, who does a lot of stuff with Daily Tech News Show. Diamond Club and Cord Killers actually has been hired by them as a correspondent. He also he also did a uh, a crowdfunded um, um, politics based card game. I think it is that he's talked about on there. It's called the 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 Contender. Uh, so so he knows the stuff there, and he's a very uh, multimedia guy. Um, but but before now, I was hearing about it, it's now available. It, it's been available for a little bit. I think I think they said on Android, but it's now available on Apple TV and iOS devices. Now, why is this interesting? Uh, well, they'll the, the, the tell you why it's interesting to me because as I was listening to the discussion, I think it was on Daily Tech News Show, maybe one of the other ones. Um, basically, I think you can. They're looking for submissions for content. Um, this is another place where you can put things. Um, and I think it might be an interesting as a content provider to, to do something on the ground floor. I'm kind of talking strategy, our own strategy. Yet. Oh, I was just going to say, <laughs> so, so when for is possibilities, but, so, but, but as for other content providers out there, this might be something to look at again. I think it's partially limited, limited because it is like Apple TV, iOS. It's not like, you know, a lot of other places, but, but if, if you're one of the first doing a thing in there, that might be very beneficial for you. And, and it's, it, to your point, it was originally released on Android, so I'm sure it's on Android TV. So if it's iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, right. Android, for Android people, TV. For all the people that have Android TV. <laughs> I know, Chilla. So, well, but I mean, <laughs> it is a, but even just Android in general, it's a big marketplace. I mean, you look at, you, for people that are going to, let's put it this way. For people that are going to consume your content, are you going to try to put up a dish and a TV network, or are you going to try to push it down to devices that you know people want to consume that content on? So I, I think this is I think this is uh, this Sorgatron Media needs to be here. You have one viewer. I'll sign up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Is it? Is it? And this is what I don't understand because I'm not familiar with. BitTorrent now is it kind of like on demand or how yeah i think it is and then there's a BitTorrent live that's like their streaming their service. streaming service so so yeah it, it, inspiration on demand follow artists save your favorites be in the know um that's that's where they're going with things well but, look at like river's edge i mean they're all local they mm-hmm. they're all no covers mm-hmm. I, I mean this is to me that that, that larger grasp at trying to pull in and what i worry is are you going to get a bunch of people that it, are you going to have to be sifting through a lot of content to find what you're looking for listen we're already on itunes which is the biggest sifting operation i think is out there right now okay um so i, I but i think i think if there's anything like this that you think is going to take off like this right mm-hmm. uh, we throw ourselves at, at, at google play music i have not seen any bump from google play music i think there's possibilities there and i think people are still discovering the platform but i think our fans that listen to our shows already found us where they're going to find us mm-hmm. that sounds sad when i say it that way um so i don't know if we'll find like new people will find us on there with with the glut that jumped in on it what because of like yeah google play music of course or or i don't know i don't know what's going on there but i just the, the stats i checked like a month ago and it didn't seem like it was very good um another thing so i don't know if i talked about on this show other places you know we're on high heart radio we're on spreaker we're on spreaker because that got us on iHeartRadio, radio right but for a lot of you out there that, again, for content providers that have podcasts, and I always say if you're starting a podcast, Libsyn is, go pay for Libsyn, it is going to be worth it. 
Um, and I won't get into the reasons why I don't have all of my podcasts on Lipsyn's, but all my clients are on Lipsyn. Well, all my clients are now going to be able to go on to iHeartRadio. Um, much like they had to deal with Spotify early on, and I haven't gone into the details of how they're doing iHeartRadio. I I'm sure there's probably an approval process like we had with Spreaker. And, um, and, and, and I feel like if you're paying for it, you might have a better chance getting iHeartRadio, though. Um, so Libsyn now has a partnership with iHeartRadio. Again, uh, what iHeartRadio is the thing that you can listen to your morning radio that's on your FM dial, on your app, wherever you want to be, any place in the country. Right. Um, so I can listen to Mikey Big Bob here in town when I'm, you know, in California, if I really wanted to. Right. Um, but also they, we have our podcasts on there and they've allowed other content in there as well. So uh, I think it's a big platform and opportunity for a lot of people to get on, especially if your thing can come up in search results right beside standard content on the radio. I think that's a big advantage for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just kind of finding the places for, for people to, to find you. So. Uh, Chilla, you had one that was interesting. What? Pat needs to copy something, I see. Pat is our local, um, 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 uh, transportation authority, I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, the New York City Metropolitan Transportation Authority, MTA, announced a $27 billion five-year plan. Woo. Um, they're going to add 1,025 new subway cars, um, Wow. What's and that's a lot of cars. That's probably like quadruple what we have, <laughs> and these are just new some new cars. Um, what's really cool about this is um, the cars will be outfitted with digital screens, better security, um, Wi-Fi, USB charging ports in the cars and the stations. Um, so if you're Pokemon Go, um, <laughs> you can find that Pokemon in the subway on the subway car while you recharge. Nice. Um, th they want these devices to work 24 hours a day. Um, in addition to that, they're looking at uh, some additional technology integration in the stations, um, wayfinding information, countdown clocks, enhanced lighting, um, again, USB ports. I I think that for, for people to continue to want to use mass transportation um i think this this is something that needs to come to a lot of cities i feel like pittsburgh's small enough that mm -hmm. they could mm -hmm. it's not going to be a 27 billion dollar investment no absolutely not um i would be happy if we can get countdown clocks but um i i just look at i mean new york's doing it right i know it, and when you look at their their theory, it's it's one price anywhere you want to go. I, I, Which I, we're turning into. Yeah, yeah, we are turning into that. That's going to um, be coming up soon, I think, right? Yes, I think it's in the fall. Which I think is fine. I, I know we're going to lose... We're going to hold everything. I, think, I know we're going to lose certain advantages if you have certain routes that you do. But I think overall, it, it's, it helps modernize and make things... Because seriously, how many people think about, am I going inbound or outbound? You know, it's just I get on a train, I pay, right? You know, regardless of what I do, that's what's going on in New York City. I mean, geez, you can get on, pay one price, and jump two or three lines, or and and I mean, jump onto other lines of 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 transportation within the system without paying again. You know, now now is now is the pad authority going to do some of that? When, and I look at it, how you can augment that. I mean, if if you started it's to transfers. put in. But, but if you started to put in like digital displays, yeah, now all of the paper advertising can be rotated digitally over the Wi-Fi. I, I realized how old the map is up here at Fallowfield, like <laughs> like yesterday. I, I, I'm like I like I'm standing in line because I came I came it was kind of rush hourish when I got back from downtown, and I'm just like that is freaking old. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it was like like the old old. Like I don't even think it had the line that went across the river. And they haven't even updated that. I still it's, have the brown incredible. line. It had the brown line on it, which isn't a thing anymore. <laughs> it's just like, wow, that's that's weird. That is weird. Um, and I've been riding the train. I've been riding the train since there was no blue line <laughs> for mm. the longest time um, out there, the library and everything. Everything everything came through Beachview. Um, but anyways, and but I think you I think you could help aug augment it with. Better advertising mm -hmm. um, and, and whatnot. I, I, I just think it's a it's a. We're already doing uh, bus and train tracking 
uh, here in town. You have to use the transit app. And the PGH Info guys, I've had conversations with, with uh, those guys a couple of times now. And they're actually, if you go into the chat on the transit app on your iPhone Android device, um, that's them. Like, they're handling okay. that. They're, 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 like, they're supplementing that for the transit authority. Um, so that information is there. Like, that tracking information is there. That's what I pull up. I don't look at any schedule. I pull up, I have a widget on my phone, the transit app, and especially since everything's so, been so freaking goofy up here, um, I pull that down and say, okay, what is, the, what is the closest line, and which way am I going? Because you just tap to just kind of shoot it the other way, and, um, and I'm ready to go. Or, or depending on where I'm at... Um, okay, uh, I have a button that says home. I have a button for, because I often go out to Mount Lebanon for uh, where, where, where my wife works and just, you know, hit her up for lunch or, or, or uh, I feel like I'm hitting her up for money when I say it that way. But no, no, I have lunch with her or, or, or whatnot. And, um, and, and and I like there's a button for Uber in there as well. So, you know, if I are like, eh, I don't want to wait another half an hour. I have taken a lift when I notice it's going to be another half hour before my red line comes. Since this has been so goofy with the construction. Um, what, what's the name of the app? I can't find it. Transit. It's a green app. <laughs> it's a green app. It's a green app called Transit. Transit. There it is. Yeah. It's uh, it's got kind of got an up and down wavy like. It's a, an S and on its side. It's, it is an S on its side. Look at that. Um, but yeah, the transit app get that, that works in install most major cities as well. And like I said, I believe if you see, uh, I guess the train night, not so much, but depending on where it is like the, uh, the, 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 I'm looking at the red two, which is the shuttle, the free shuttle that comes up through here since the train's not working. Um, there's a little, little thing, little couple lines, which means it's actually tracking its location and it says it's going to be 18 minutes away. I wonder if that is actually showing me where the bus is completely. Hmm. Anyways, so no, that's that's been really cool. I love that this is modernized. And of course, we have a mayor and an administration right now that's very big on data and making things work and 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 putting this stuff public, you know, uh, um, um, and, and I think that's really cool. And I'd like to see that New York City. I, I mean, it's harder for New York City to do this. Let's be honest about it. Yeah, they, it's a big city. Yeah. The infrastructure is insane. In comparison to the holy two lines that we have for a train here in town and a bunch of buses, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. And there's there's the do they have money to do this stuff plus versus the scale. So, all right. Well, let's hit up one more story real 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 real, real, real quick. And um, this is, I feel like I was going to talk about the 65, 65 foot USB cable connection, but never mind. I, hey, there's a 64 or 65 bit USB co connection. If you really need to connect that webcam across your house. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we talked about Bank of America, but uh, carless cash withdrawal coming to a lot more ATMs eventually. The Verge was talking about this. And, and, and having to do a lot of kind of ATM banking lately, um, I'm really looking forward to this because, I mean, that's just, uh, the you know one of the big things for this is is card skimmers you're, which if you're not familiar some people can put a card uh reader on top of the card reader that actually works for the atm that will capture your thing and uh so always check does it look like it's bulkier than it usually is do you, if you if you if you grab it does it move for instance did you did you have a hard time getting your card into the machine yeah. like because i've, I've well, heard I've that, that like they're they're, they're obviously an extra layer, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit harder to get the card in. Right, right, exactly. So, um, so, so I think that that's good for that safety, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just like I've been really concerned with um, um, USBs in public places for power. I actually had a nightmare last night that all I had was USB plugs in a public place, and I had to plug all my stuff into it or not use them. <laughs> like I, I literally had a nightmare about USB plugs last night. Um, it, it's it's. Uh, that is the most messed up thing to have a dream about. <laughs> but, um, but no, I think I think that's helpful for that kind of thing, for that identity identity uh, um, 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 kind of thing, and 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 um, it, it just makes it safer, mm -hmm. especially if it's going to be those kind of. Um, I, I don't worry so much at my branch ATM 
But if you're like, I'm stuck and need to do this thing in the corner, and like, uh, there's Shelly's Diner that's really awesome, or, or Breakfast at Shelly's that's uh, uh, up by Work Hard. Love the place, but they're cash only, and they have one of those really shady ATMs in the corner. And I hate using those, not just for the fee, but I'm just like, I feel like that is definitely going to take my information and use it somewhere. Um, and all I wanted was some bacon. Uh, you know, and, 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 and if those things start doing something like this, uh, I would feel maybe a little bit better about it. So... Especially if you're using Apple, if you're using Apple Pay Touch ID, this is the other thing. Cause, um, Wendy's just got like you know a lot of like what a thousand locations. Thankfully, and they had a nice little locator. Have you been to this location? <laughs> oh, this one's not on the list, right? And, and I got thinking about it. well, if you used Apple Pay, nobody would have your card because they don't get your card information. Right? They get a random generated number that connects with the bank then and there, it's and used once. Used once makes the transaction from your bank account to McDonald's, because I know they have Apple Pay, um, and they wouldn't have, and if there was a breach, nobody would have your card. If you use Apple Pay all the time, you're even more secure. Mm -hmm. So, just there's a case for technology. Chilla, it's been a blast. It has been a blast. Talking tech with you. It's been an awesome Tuesday. It's been an awesome Tuesday, and it's about to get awesomer as we get into some wrestling stuff here coming up. Uh, so if you are uh, uh, into that, stay tuned with us. 10 p.m. We'll be getting going with some wrestling talk again. Of course, big night here uh, with that kind of stuff. Uh, Chilla is at Chilla on Twitter. ChillaTech.net. And I will be at the Replay FX um, thing in Pittsburgh. Um, that runs uh, July Thursday, July 28th through the 31st. I will be there on the 30th Saturday. Um, majority of the afternoon and evening, if you see me, I'll be the guy with the Gear 360. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dutters is going to be mad. Why? I need, I said I'd give her my Gear 360 next week. Dutters, the week after next. Or oh. if you're at Replay FX, you can take it off me as I leave. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll connect. Well, maybe, yeah. well, maybe we'll connect. Like, so I'm, so I was gonna, I'm going to take my Rico and we're going to test them both, I think. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be so. the guy with the monopod. Um, I actually got picked up a monopod pretty cheap on Amazon. And then I will be the guy with the uh, uh, GoPro and 360 camera at the Gathering of the Jugglers this week. Please don't break it, uh, people. Um, so, so Do they make a life-proof case for that? That's what I'm like. <laughs> I need a I need like a Figo-proof case for my 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 Rico Theta. Um, but no, I want to take it at least for a couple of days. Not the ICP day. Definitely. Also, I got, maybe we'll, we'll, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm not going to like stand with it in the Fago showers entirely, but we'll definitely probably have a good test for this life proof case uh, for my iPhone success. Um, it's just, it's just inevitable, but uh, everything else is going in plastic bags. <laughs> and I do have a, um, I do have a uh, GoPro as well, just like kind of a lower end one, but still. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get out of it. I, this is technically my vacation, but I just make stuff. So <laughs> we'll see what comes back from that. Uh, and aside from that, awesomecast.net, subscribe to everything at Sorgatron is me, sorgatronmedia.com to see everything else going on in the world of Sorgatron Media and the other shows and our clients and all kinds of fun stuff. Sorry, I'm doing a thing. And, uh, and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Awesomecast.net. Thank you to your awesome, uh, listeners. Um, our awesome chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Join us every Tuesday at um oh cool uh kraus actually just uh hit us a link of the true time port authority where you can see the bus time in real time with them so that's awesome um what was the other thing i was gonna plug oh uh thank you our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.